Hello and welcome, I'm Katia. Today we will be doing uh, mostly restorative yoga. So restorative yoga is where we tend to do fewer poses or shapes and we tend to hold them longer for more like, um, it can be anywhere from around four or five minutes up to like eight or nine minutes. So um, let's just get started by tuning in. So we're just gonna take a moment to check in with ourselves and notice how we have arrived today. So finding a comfortable seated position and that, you know, this can look very different for each of us. We're all very unique. So we might be sitting on a chair, we might be um, sitting on the ground. For me, I like to sit on a folded blanket or you can use a towel. And then I just take that folded blanket and kind of wedge it right under my seat there, the sit bones. If you kind of rock back and forth, you can feel um, those bones there maybe if you're um, or just getting curious about that. Um, and um, the point of just wedging that blanket under the seat is to help um, like tilt the pelvis forward so that we're able to sit easier. If I don't have the blanket under me, I tend to feel like I'm kind of falling backwards. So um, that little prop there can help bring that weight forward into the knees. taken some time to find a comfortable position and you might even be laying down if that feels better for you. So we're just beginning to check in to notice the physical body. Are there any other adjustments that we need to make? Just kind of observing you know, if we have any aches or pains or chronic pain that lives with us. Beginning to bring our awareness to this physical body and offering some space or some attention, right? Just like we would a good friend or someone we care about. Bringing that attention to our physical body and just listening. Recognizing that for some of this, some, for some of us, this will be easier than others. So, if we're someone that um, you know lives with chronic pain or our body hurts, um, this might be a you know more challenging process for us. So, just practicing that mindfulness of being present and noticing judgment, inviting harmful negative judgment to be set aside, and then you know, allowing space for whatever our practice looks like today. Moving next to kind of our mental state. So noticing what is weighing on the mind, what thoughts are swirling around. Feeling free to move at your own pace. When you're ready, we'll check in with the, our emotions and just kind of noticing if we're able to label our emotions. You know, um, noticing if we're feeling tired or um, bored or anxious or excited or whatever it is or stressed. You know, sometimes the name it to tame it can be helpful. Just even the mere labeling or acknowledging our emotions sometimes can help to work through those emotions. So. 
also recognizing that sometimes we aren't able to put words to our emotions or even thoughts or physical sensations and that's totally normal as well. Again, looking for our own personal practice. And eyes can be open or closed, whatever is most comfortable for you. Softening the eyes or bringing the gaze down can help bring our awareness inside of our mind-body system. So it just kind of depends on where you would like your focus today. Sometimes we want to be looking out and we have a beautiful view that we're looking at and enjoying. So allowing your own practice. And then from here, we'll begin warming up the neck. So really listening to your body and doing what feels correct for you. If you have neck injury, you might you know, be doing something totally different than I am inviting. So feeling free to do that. So if you'd like to warm up the neck, sitting up tall, beginning to play with our breath a little bit. For me, on the inhale, there's this expansion in all directions that begins around the navel area or solar plexus area. So then the breath comes in and then we expand it into the side bodies, into the front and back bodies, and up and down. So just kind of playing there. If focusing on your breath causes stress or anxiety, please feel free to kind of tune this part of the practice out. And maybe we stay with some a somatic practice of staying with the body and, and tuning into the physical body, maybe tuning into the points of the body that make contact with the floor. But if Bringing your attention to your breath feels okay today. We're going to play with finding that inhale and we're going to find a nice tall spine, tall back, but at the same time rooting down through that tailbone, that bottom bone of the spine. And then after your next inhale, after finding that long, tall spine, we're going to allow the chin to slowly fall forward. Stretching out the back of the neck and the upper back. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe gently shaking the head no and nodding yes to really invite that head to just fall forward. On your next inhale, rolling up through center, exhaling, releasing left ear to left shoulder. And we're checking in that the weight is staying even in the sits bones. So, you know, notice if you're kind of leaning over to one side. See if we can keep that weight right in the center, even in the back nice and tall. On our next inhale, slowly coming up through center, finding that long spine, exhaling, releasing to the second side, relaxing the shoulders down away from the ears. And then from here, if it feels good, we can release the chin down towards the chest and semicircle over to that left shoulder. 
maybe just kind of semicircling, rolling between the two shoulders. Some of you might like to come into a full circle, full neck circle, drawing a little circle with that nose, just being very careful with the neck. We might bring the hands in for support or massage. Moving your head and neck in whatever way feels good for you. And then from here we're going to move into cat and cow just to warm the spine up a little bit. So um, we can do this seated or on hands and knees. So for the seated variation we'll move whatever prop we had under us to the side and and then we'll start again with that inhale, nice tall spine. On the exhale, we'll curl the tailbone under and tilt the pelvis back. So we're rounding into a seated cat. And you can wiggle or move in whatever way feels good. And then on the inhale, we'll lift that tailbone, tilt the pelvis forward, and then we arch and bring that arch all the way up through the crown of the head. And following your own breath, exhaling, rounding. Inhaling, arching. So the belly comes forward, the chest comes forward, and we're arching. Exhaling, we're rounding. We're bringing the navel back towards the spine, rounding into our back, bringing the head down as much as is comfortable, listening to your body. And then um, from here, I'm just stretching a lot. Um, we're going to come in onto our backs and we'll have a block for uh, some different shapes that we'll be doing. So if you have a block, great. If not, no problem. We can use a rolled up towel or um, some books. This is um, like three inches wide. So maybe having a couple, two or three books would work. So uh, here we'll come down onto our back. And it might feel good to bring the knees in towards the chest and we can hold them or not. Whatever feels good there. Might like to rock side to side, giving your low back a little massage. And then we'll bring the feet down to the ground. And we're going to straighten out that right leg if you like or it can stay bent it depends on the low back we're gonna just do some ankle rolls with that left side and straighten it out a little bit your wherever your straight is might be out at this angle or up high or close wherever your flexibility is at and we'll just do some point and flex and some ankle rolls Again, that right leg might be bent, or you can straighten it out onto the floor, just kind of checking in with that low back. I always like to like kind of massage the back of the leg, but you don't have to do that. You don't even have to hold. Just kind of stretching that left leg. And then we'll switch sides. So again, left leg bent or straight, check in with your low back. Bringing that right leg in, bent, some ankle rolls, you can hold. If that feels good. We're just letting it hover. Eventually straightening that right leg out. Maybe massaging if you can reach. Checking in with the shoulders and the head. We want everything relaxed. You know, notice if we're kind of holding our head or tightening our jaw. Seeing if we can invite relaxation. All right. And then from here, coming into bridge. So to come into bridge, our legs are bent. Feet are about hip distance apart. Arms at our side, palms facing down. 
Take a nice big inhale. On the exhale, pressing the low back into the floor, tailbone lifts up off the ground, hips lift, continuing that lift until we're up onto our shoulder blades. So we might just stay here. You're welcome to, if you want to build a little heat. For more of a restorative yoga pose or shape, we would slide the block at whatever height. We have three heights. Low, this length, flat, medium, and then high. So I'll just, I'm gonna start on that low setting there. Might just start there to check in, kind of get comfortable. We want the block under the sacrum, which is the triangular bone right above the tailbone. So not under your waist, okay? Not under the navel, we want it closer to the feet. And your body will usually tell you if it doesn't like where you placed it. So once we find our block positioning, beginning to settle into the shape. And once we're there, we might notice, oh, I think I can actually lift a little higher and I might feel okay with that. So we can do that and then flip block there and then beginning to tune into the breath if that feels okay or we can stay with the body like I mentioned earlier if the breath focus feels okay we're going to invite that breath to stay around the heart so this is called directional breathing if you have never um, played with this before no problem just getting curious and noticing how it feels for you so we'll invite the breath this time to come in around the heart, to stay up high in the chest. And spreading out into the shoulders, you know, spreading out big around the heart, front, back, side, side. Still that, we call it navel radiation and body, mind centering. So still that kind of balloon breath where we expand into the sides, the front, back, top, bottom all around the heart and then on the exhale slowly releasing coming back towards center back towards the heart inviting the heart to get heavy to relax So if we have a block under us, we're still like gently pressing the palms into the floor, gently pressing the feet into the floor, reaching out through the fronts of the kneecap. Yeah, we're still looking for our alignment. If we notice that our mind is wandering off in a trail of thoughts, no problem. The practice is the noticing. So when we notice, oh, I was off on that trail of thoughts, then we gently invite our attention back to the breath or back to the body, wherever we're wanting our focus to be. So picking a focus and staying true to that focus. focus that one thing to be mindful about and to be present with it can be our breath it can be the body like we've talked about there's other mindfulness practices that we could use if that works better for us in yoga we usually do use the breath but you know that doesn't always work for all of us so listening to your own system and so the reason that we invite that focus is to help build those neural connections in the brain, those pathways of focus so that they're stronger and not so scattered in our brain so that when we're looking for a way to calm ourselves or to, um, to relieve stress or anxiety or you know work with depression or 
um, you know, too much excitement. We're able, we have those tools that we've been practicing already. So then when we go to use that tool, there's already a pathway there. And so it's easier to access that pathway. All right, so wrapping up with bridge here when you're ready, listening to your own practice. So you might like to stay longer. You might have already gotten out, no problem. When we're ready to get out, we'll lift the hips and we'll slide that prop out from under us. And then I like to gently rock side to side, coming down, massaging as I go, and then letting that low back release first and then the tailbone so there's not like this plopping of the hips down, which can be um, hard on the low back or, you know, some bodies don't like it. And then we'll pick the legs up, bring them in towards the heart, be rocking if that feels good, or if you don't want to pick them up, you know, just releasing that shape in whatever way feels good. Usually we do like a counter stretch. So where we were in bridge, our um, arching, now we want to round. So kind of like that cat cow, we want to move our bodies in the opposite direction of what we were just doing. So in whatever way that works for you, it could be a rolling over on the side, and curling up in fetal position. Or maybe we're liking this on the back and we can, another thing we can do while we're here is draw circles with the knees. Slowly or fast, whatever feels best for you. Just kind of drawing a circle on the ceiling with those knees and then switching directions as you like. to a twist. So today we'll work with windshield wiper twist. I forgot to mention, bridge is great for working with feelings of um, sadness and depression. It's a heart opener. So um, it also feels really good in my back. You know, like, like I said, all bodies are different. So it's going to feel different in all bodies. So if you're, you know, ever um, having feelings of sadness or depression, bridge is a great one to go to, or just to stretch the back. Um, so twists are great for bringing out what no longer supports us, um, as well as bringing mobility to the spine. So today we're going to work, they can be intense, so we're going to um, start gently and we'll um, do windshield wiper twist today. So with windshield wiper, we keep the feet on the ground and feet can be close together or wide, like hip distance or even a little wider if you like. And then we're going to bring our arms out into a T, palms facing up if that feels okay. It's an internal rotation of the shoulders and so it makes more room for the lungs, more um, room to bring oxygen into the body. We'll start at center, a nice big inhale. On the exhale, slowly releasing the knees to one side. I'm going to the right. Exhaling fully. When the inhale comes, we'll come up through center. And then exhaling, releasing to that second side. Feel free to keep it moving, keep it dynamic and kind of moving with your breath. Inhaling up through center. Exhaling, releasing to the second side. Or you can just stay restful on one side. Maybe we could gently pick up the head and rotate it in the opposite direction for a full spinal twist, but maybe that's too much. Listening to your body. Bringing the breath in nice and slow. Filling and expanding. Bringing in as much air as possible. With the exhale, we're slowly releasing every last whisper of air, maybe even resting at the end of that exhale. If you're with me, if you're resting on one side, if you're dynamic and moving, you're doing your own thing with your breath. And then getting ready to switch, inhaling up through center, exhaling, releasing to the second side. Again, maybe we rotate that head in the opposite direction of the knees. 
Rather than just like flopping the head to one side, we'll gently lift the head, like just maybe, you know, a half inch, quarter inch off the ground. Lengthen, inhale. Exhale, rotate the head in the opposite direction of the knees. And that way we're keeping that spine nice and long and twisting from there, rather than allowing the head to kind of go, you know, off the spine and then twist. But, you know, if we're new to this practice, we're just getting curious and we're learning. Again, finding that breath, bringing it in nice and slow, bringing in as much air as possible. Without forcing or hurting yourself, yeah? And then on the exhale, slowly release. When you feel balanced and you find an inhale, we'll come back to center. And then again, it might feel good to pick those knees up. And then from here, we're gonna move into rest or last shape, Shavasana. So, um, you know, if there's any other stretching you might like to do, you're welcome to do that now. You might wanna grab a blanket or your sock or something to get warm. Um, our body temperature does tend to drop when we're coming into rest. So just checking in there, even just a little weight, like I just threw my blanket, can be help the body to relax when we're here. I do encourage you to um, find somewhere to rest, you know, just to allow all of the work and love and oxygen that we just brought into our bodies some time to fully integrate into our whole system, into our whole mind-body system. In Sanskrit, this is called Shavasana, which means corpse. So, well, we're not dead. We're inviting those qualities of a corpse and just the idea of doing nothing of just being. So finding that for yourself, inviting your whole body to relax. Feel free to bring in an eye pillow or something to cover your eyes. An eye pillow is just a little weighted bag, eye bag that we put over our eyes. If we're laying on our back, we're inviting our eyes to sink back into their sockets. Inviting the brain to relax back into the skull, inviting the whole head to get heavy, the jaw to relax, the skin of the face to Inviting the shoulders to get heavy. The arms to get heavy. Even the hands. Relaxing the heart and the belly. The legs get heavy and the feet. Inviting the weight of the body to fully release into the floor, into the earth. Just resting. Inviting ourselves to let everything else go.
Feel free to stay resting for longer if you'd like. If you're ready to transition, stretching, waking the body in whatever way feels good. I'll invite you to roll over to one side first and curl up, just resting on your side there for a moment, noticing whatever there is to notice. And then when you're ready, beginning to come, find a seated position. So using the legs, the arms to help transition, allowing the head to stay heavy and to be the last thing to roll up. So if we were on our sides, we bring those arms and we use the arms to push and that head just gets to stay heavy. They call that getting up with ease. So again, finding your seat, whatever seat 